Okay. Good morning. Welcome to Main Street United Methodist Church, where we celebrate Pentecost Sunday, Music Sunday, and Graduation Sunday. And I don't think we've overlooked anything. Oh, wait a minute, it's my granddaughter's, my youngest granddaughter's eighth birthday Sunday. <laughs> I'm not kidding, it really is. So, uh, at our house, that's the big thing this afternoon. So, um, if you're a first time guest, we welcome you and ask you to, if you haven't already received a free coffee mug to speak to one of our greeters or ushers and they'll see that you receive one. Today is going to be a little different in our service in that there will be more music and hope you will stay with us. The call to worship when we get to it is a song call to worship and uh, I think the words will be displayed but however if they're not it's in the faith we sing. Um, I'm not going to lift up any announcements that they're in the bulletin for you to read. Do we have any, though, that need to be announced out loud? No. Okay. Then I invite you to rise and greet one another on this day the Lord has made.
Let us stand for the call to worship. It's on found in the um, the faith we sing on page two two three six. It's the first, second, and fourth verse. You breathed into darkness, and there was light. You breathed into death, and there was light. Breathe into us the breath of your spirit. We pray that the newness may arise, and the waters flow with streams in the desert to bless the earth. Our lives and our lips give you praise to you, source of all life and God of our salvation. On this day of Pentecost, we join in the community to invite and celebrate your power and the presence within us and among us. Amen. The hymn of praise is the church's one foundation found in the red hymnal on page 546.
join me now in our congregational prayer. O oh, gracious God, we pray for your holy church universal, that you would be pleased to fill it with all truth and all peace, where it is corrupt, purify it, where it is in error, direct it, where in anything it is amiss, reform it, where it is right, establish it, where it is in want, provide for it, where it is divided, reunite it. For the sake of him who died and rose again, and ever lives to make intercession for us, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen.
invite the children to come up at this time. I see you back there. I see you back there. What are those back for? They're for the graduates. We have so much fun stuff going on today. Today, guess what? We're celebrating again. Remember I told you it's really fun to be a Christian because we celebrate so much. It's the church's birthday. Wow, somebody went to Sunday school. <laughs> Me, he did, he says he did. Well then you probably heard the story that when after Jesus had died and then he was resurrected and he went back to heaven, he ascended into heaven, the disciples were left alone. They didn't have their friend anymore. All they had was each other. And they had gathered together because Pentecost was already a big celebration people came in to offer the first fruits of their harvest. Hi, Carson. And so everybody was in town for the big celebration. Well, the disciples were all together in one room, and all of a sudden there was this whoosh of wind. And these things like flames, tongues of flames, came down on their heads, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit had come. Jesus had promised when he got to heaven he would send a comforter, a friend. And so the Holy Spirit came. Well, the Holy Spirit didn't just come on that day. He's still here. And he lives inside all Christ followers, everyone who loves Jesus. He lives inside of us. He helps us make good decisions. He helps us think properly. When we read our Bible, he helps us to understand it. He's here with us all the time. And I think that sounds like a great reason to celebrate, don't you? So I brought you some streamers. Now check out the colors. What do you think the colors are for? What do they remind us of? The fire, that's right. Lots of people were in Sunday school this morning. They're the fire. So let's wave our fire like Pentecost and let's say a prayer. Dear God, thank you for sending the Holy Spirit to help us, to teach us, and to guide us. We thank you in his name, amen. I invite you to stand as you're able for our Psalter in song form. It is uh, to, the, to the song, Many and Great, O God, which is in the hymnal on page 148, and also on the screens. is number 883, a statement of faith of the United Church of Canada. Let us join together. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, 
to celebrate God's presence, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. God gives all creatures good things in due season. Let us give good things to all God's people in all seasons. Our, our offering will now be taken as our ushers and our acolyte come forward.
so we desire to give. We recognize your spirit moving among all people, all creatures, and all creation. We gladly share with each other and joyfully receive from you who are ever giving and never failing. Amen. Please be seated. so happy to celebrate ch young people who have come to the age of graduation and so we'd like to take just a couple minutes to recognize this year's graduates. We had four, Mary Catherine Dudley, um, Emily Fowler, Destiny Martin, and Evan Hicks. And Judy Van Winkle has always been our connection with the high school and so she is going to make the presentation this morning. This is going to be my last time because I ain't got no connection anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I retired for the second time. Come on up, guys. We have some helpers on the front row from our Wednesday afternoon group. <laughs> Hi, guys. This is our um, Main Street United Methodist Church class of 2018. You notice that you've, we've watched these uh, young people grow up um, from being, some of them being baptized here, growing up. Evan started out as an acolyte, moved up to a cross bear, and now he's graduated to usher. So these are... <laughs> And they, these are young people that, uh, that any parent, any church would be proud of. They've been a, a meaningful part of Liberty High School in their careers. And on behalf of the United Methodist Women this morning, I just want you to know that as you leave um, or stay, I don't know exactly what your plans are, that the church is always here for you. We're always here to back you up. We're always here to support you. And remember that you are standing here this morning because somebody in Main Street United Methodist Church loves you and cares about you, and we pray for you on a regular basis. Uh, as you go out, out where you're going, um, if you're going to a, a state college where there's a Wesley Foundation, I encourage you to, to do that if they still have Wesley Foundation. It's a very meaningful part of my life at JMU. It's the Methodist Church for college kids, and it's run by the kids themselves. But we are just so happy this morning to have Destiny and Evan and Emily. And I've already apologized to Emily for having her name spelled wrong in the Bedford Bulletin coming up this week. <laughs> uh, so what I'm going to do um, is, so you all won't have to stop them individually and ask them on the way out. I'm just going to ask them what their plans are. Destiny? Um, I plan on attending CVCC this fall. And completing my general studies. Very good. That's a smart plan. Evan? I also plan on attending CBCC in the fall and studying criminal justice. And Emily? Um, I'm going to JMU in the fall to study biology. All right, we have a bag of goodies for you all. There's a, a, a book for you to read. There's a, 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 a prayer scarf in here that people, members of the church have been knitting. So when it's cold and you need something to warm you up, you can put your scarf on. If you're feeling sad, if you're feeling lonely, 
You can wrap yourself in God's love with the scarf because these scarves are prayed over as they are knit for you all. And we're, again, on behalf of the congregation and the United Methodist Women, I say congratulations. I also noticed that we have a couple of college graduates in the congregation and their families. Would you all stand up too? I know we have at least one back here. Just wanted to let you know they're still going. Thank you, Beth. Thank you, Judy. And thank you to all our graduates. Our hymn of preparation this morning is number 347, and I invite you to stand for Spirit Song. Please join me in our prayer for illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Our New Testament lesson is from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. I'm reading it from the translation of the message. Hear then the word of God. When the Feast of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Without warning, there was a sound like a strong wind, gale force. No one could tell where it came from. It filled the whole building. Then, like a wildfire, the Holy Spirit spread through their ranks, and they started speaking in a number of different languages as the Spirit prompted them. There were many Jews staying in Jerusalem just then, devout pilgrims from all over the world. When they heard the sound, they came on the run. 
that when they heard one after another their own mother tongues being spoken, they were thunderstruck. They couldn't for the life of them figure out what was going on and kept saying, aren't these all Galileans? How come we're hearing them talk in our various mother tongues? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, visitors from Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphyla, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, immigrants from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, even Cretans and Arabs. They're speaking our languages, describing God's mighty works. Their heads were spinning. They couldn't make head or tail of any of it. They talked back and forth, confused. What's going on here? Others joked, they're drunk on cheap wine. That's when Peter stood up and backed by the other 11, spoke out with bold urgency. Fellow Jews, all of you who are visiting Jerusalem, listen carefully and get this story straight. These people aren't drunk as some of you suspect. They haven't had time to get drunk. It's only nine o'clock in the morning. This is what the prophet Joel promised, announced would happen. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on every kind of people. Your sons will prophesy, also your daughters. Your young men will see visions, your old men dream dreams. When the time comes, I'll pour out my spirit on those who serve me, men and women both, and they'll prophesy. I'll set wonders in the sky above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billowing smoke, the sun turning black and the moon blood red, before the day of the Lord arrives, the day tremendous and marvelous, and whoever calls out to help, to me, God, will be saved. The word of God for the people of God. God. You might be a redneck, says comedian Jeff Foxworthy, if your grandmother was asked to leave a bingo game because of her language. You might be a redneck if you ever hit a jukebox with a pool cue. You might be a redneck if you came back from the dump with more than you took. <laughs> you might be a redneck if you know how many bales of hay your car will hold. <laughs> you might be a redneck if your dad walks you to school because you're in the same grade. <laughs> I don't really understand why it's still acceptable in our politically correct society to make fun of rednecks. Perhaps it's because rednecks make fun of themselves. One of the longest running comedy shows on television was Hee Haw, a show by rednecks for rednecks. And has there ever been a more popular town on television than the old Andy Griffith show? Perhaps because that gives us a license to target rednecks. They make fun of themselves. Now why in the world would I be talking about rednecks on Pentecost? It is because Galilee was the cultural equivalent of redneck country in the time of Jesus. You could always tell a Galilean by his or her accent. Galilean scholars tell us had difficulty pronouncing gutturals and had the habit of swallowing syllables when speaking. They might say things like running instead of running, or hunting instead of hunting. They might say far when they met fire. The wise men came from afar, as the old joke goes. <laughs> now, I don't want anyone here this morning to think I am poking fun of accents, even though all of you have one and I don't. <laughs> now, having recently spent time with my relatives in New York, excuse me, New York, I learned that much of my family speaks in strange and wonderful ways, too. So Galileans were looked down upon as being provincial, backward, and even a little slow. When Peter stood in the courtyard while Jesus was being interrogated by Pilate, a servant girl knew Peter had been one of Jesus' disciples. Why? Well, because of his accent. His Galilean accent gave him away. So now, knowing what we know about the Galilean accent, put yourself in Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost. Here are these Galileans, and suddenly they are all speaking eloquently in foreign languages. 
They are speaking in the equivalent of German and French and Arabic and Ethiopian, and they are speaking so fluently that people hearing them, people who came from all over the known world, understand them perfectly in their own tongue. Can you imagine Jed Clampett of the Beverly Hillbilly suddenly bursting forth in fluent Greek? Can you imagine Gomer Pyle suddenly speaking fluent German? Or Hehaw's Junior Sample speaking French as if, a Fran as if French was his native tongue? I don't think so. If you can imagine that group of rednecks with limited or no education suddenly speaking exotic languages, then you can imagine the scene in Jerusalem that first Pentecost. No wonder, no wonder the crowds who heard them speaking were stunned. No wonder this event had such an impact. No wonder when Peter stood up to preach, thousands were converted. This was dramatic. This was extraordinary. This was unbelievable. These country bumpkins suddenly became remarkable communicators, articulate ambassadors, sophisticated sentinels. That brings us to something we need to see about Pentecost. Pentecost is a day of unity and respect for all people. It is interesting to me to note the contrast between this story of the day of Pentecost and the Old Testament story of the Tower of Babel. You remember that ancient story in which humankind decided to build a great tower to the heavens to make a name for themselves, but God confused their speech so they could not communicate with one another and destroyed the tower and scattered the people. Now contrast that scene with the day of Pentecost. Here again, people were gathered together in a large group but these were people who had come from all over the known world and already spoke different languages. Suddenly these Galileans began speaking and everyone present could understand in his or her own language. The Tower of Babel represents humanity's alienation from one another, but Pentecost represents humanity, humanity's coming together in Christ. That which had been torn asunder came back together under the Lordship of Jesus. In a day in which our society is so divided, we need to remind ourselves of a group of country bumpkins who sought not to divide society, but to unite it. In fact, the spokesman for the group, a later convert, more educated and sophisticated than the rest, spoke their sentiments and God's when he wrote, there is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Shame on these people trying to divide us. Shame on those people who treat others with disrespect. Pentecost is a day of unity and respect for all people. And there's something else we need to see. Pentecost is from God. Pentecost is not a human-made device. It is a gift from on high. The crowd in Jerusalem understood that. When they heard the disciples preach, they knew that something extraordinary was happening. Men from such deprived backgrounds do not suddenly obtain such amazing rhetorical abilities, at least not under normal circumstances. Something dramatic was happening something from God. And we need a consciousness today that God is at work in the world. Even more importantly, we need a consciousness that God's power is available to us. If God can use these humble Galileans, think what he could do with people like you and me. Tracy Bailey is a young man who discovered that God's power is still at work in the world, but it only came after Tracy had broken his parents' hearts and shocked his disbelieving community. The citizens of Goshen, Indiana had been stunned to learn that Tracy Bailey, captain of the wrestling team, member of the student council, good student from the church-going Bailey family, had been one of the teenagers involved in a devastating vandalism attack on the local high school.
Tracy had fallen in with an unruly group who used alcohol to fuel their frequent petty vandalism and thefts. But one night, the boys, in a drunken frenzy, had broken into the high school and tore apart whole classrooms. Now, the judge wanted to hold them up as an example to others with similar mayhem in their blood. Tracy was sentenced to a five-year term in the juvenile offender's facility. Originally conceived as a lesser form of penitentiary, this facility now held hardened criminals, even murderers and rapists. It would not be a slap on the wrist. In prison, Tracy was determined not to bend an inch. He would be tough. He would never admit defeat, no matter how much he was hurting. But during a stint in solitary confinement, Tracy happened to catch, a, catch sight of himself in a mirror, and the sight shocked him. He just didn't look hardened. He looked deadened. Deadened. And he knew that the deadness would keep reaching down past his countenance into his very soul. All his toughness melted away and his tears began to flow as he prayed to God and admitted his defeat. There was no one else to turn to and he couldn't rely on his own reserves anymore. Tracy doesn't know how long he prayed, but he does know that God heard him. One of his guards approached him and offered him prayer. Someone else gave him a Bible and soon he joined the prison Bible study. When he was released from the center, Tracy worked a few months pay off his debts and make restitution to the school he vandalized. Then he entered college, studying for an education degree, degree in science and in math. He decided he would pay back society by becoming a good role model to other confused young people. He would become a teacher. I guess you could say he reached his goal in April 1993, Tracy Bailey attended a special ceremony at the White House where President Bill Clinton awarded him the high honor of National Teacher of the Year. Rednecks speak foreign languages fluently. A young man in prison studies the Bible and later becomes National Teacher of the Year. Do such things really happen in this world? Yeah, they do. They truly do. God is alive and at work in this world, regardless of who we are and what we have done, the door is open for a new beginning. Pentecost is a celebration of our unity in Christ. Pentecost is a celebration of God's power at work in our world. And also, you and I have a place in this dramatic story. God can use us, all of us, in a dramatic way. In fact, most of us have many more advantages than did Peter and the apostles. Most of us are well-educated. We are relatively affluent. We are people with an amazing abundance of talents and opportunities. The problem is that you and I have not emptied ourselves and opened ourselves to be vehicles of God's grace. We have so much potential, and we have settled for so little in terms of performance. But it's not too late. The fire of God is still available to us if we are open to it. The wind of God is blowing in this world. People of every nation, every language, every race are coming to Christ in unprecedented numbers. But Christ still needs ambassadors in the world. They may be male or female, black, white, brown, yellow. They may be rich or poor. They may be Generation X, millennials, yuppies, members of AARP. They may be college educated, or yes, they may be rednecks. It makes absolutely no difference. God can use anyone who takes the name of Jesus seriously. An amazing thing happened that first Pentecost. A group of rednecks was used of God to start a revolution. That revolution continues today. It is a revolution of respect for all people and a recognition that God is at work. Won't you join this revolution today? In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue our time this morning with a time of uh,
praise and, and prayer. This service, uh, all of our worship is geared around uh, an element of thanksgiving and praise, but today's service is somewhat unique in that our whole service has been oriented in that direction. And in celebration, it brings joy. One of the songs that Jenny has taught to children over the years, a line in it is, if you're happy and you know it, shout amen. I don't know about you all, but I'm happy this morning and I want some other people to know it. I'd like for the people, whoever might be walking down the sidewalk out there to know it. So if you're like me and you're happy and you want somebody to know it, you know what you have to do on the count of three. One, two, three. Amen. You're good. <laughs> In our time of prayer this morning, we hold our graduates, uh, high school and college, up to you. Uh, we hold them up in prayer as they begin new chapters in their lives. Uh, we hold Linda Beam up in her recovery uh, in Jackie Overstreet. And Leighton Langford is continuing to uh, uh, make progress in his uh, knee replacement. And so we hold these up. And I ask you now, who are the family and friends and situations that you would hold up on this day? Bill and Stella, who had an eye surgery in October. Yes. 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 Please continue to pray for my brother Charles, my good friend Jim, and his wife Carol. Yes. Yes. The families of Memphis who lost their loved ones. Yes. Then let us begin our time of prayer with a time of silence, of asking God to come into our space, into your space. Let us pray. <clears throat> Lord of all, this life that we live in the brokenness of this world, your creation, brings much sadness with it. But on this day and in special times, we find a way to come together and to, to celebrate, to celebrate your presence, to celebrate the work that you are doing in and among us and around us. And that brings joy, the joy that causes us to shout amen, to want others to know that joy and where it comes from, the life, death, and resurrection, the good news of Jesus the Christ, who has built a bridge, a pathway, that offer a pathway to redemption, of renewal, new life. And for that we give thanks. That new life also calls upon us to be intercessors, to offer up prayers, to, to bring before you family and friends and situations. As we've given voice to this morning, and through our faith in Christ our Savior, we lay them before you, trusting in the work of your spirit in our lives and in our world. 
And through that unity of faith, we conclude praying the prayer that our Lord Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name.
for waking everybody up. <laughs> if you wish to come and kneel at the altar rail during our closing hymn, you are certainly most welcome to do so. If you're searching for a church home, we invite you to unite with Main Street in membership. You can either talk to us after the service or just step by or call us anytime during the week. Our closing hymn of dedication is number 68, When in Our Music God is Glorified. The benediction today is also a visual, de visual benediction that will appear on the screens. So I invite you to rise at this time for When in Our Music God is Glorified. Mm -hmm.